Hello, welcome to the Ultimate Board Marketing Podcast. Um, today we got some pretty cool, interesting topic we're going to cover, but this is all going to be about the current coronavirus, COVID-19. We want to kind of go over some of the things that you can do as a business, uh, primarily as a, especially as a boat dealer and boat dealer rental to keep your business running to this current uh, climate uh, slash situation we are in. So without further ado, let me introduce you to my guest to, today is uh, Sydney Fronbrook. She's digital marketing manager at Atlas and boat marketing force. And she's going to really kind of give us a, some some of the key elements her and I gonna just go back and forth discussing some of the key things that you can do to ensure that your business continue to run until the COVID-19 situation settle down a bit so Sydney so I guess this thing just really escalate to to a, to a very high level now and I guess uh, we just beginning of April here COVID-19 been around a little bit, but it gets very serious overnight. So so tell us a little bit, kind of what do you see as an internet marketer and what are the things that you think you see um, dealer or for that matter, any business owner, what are the things that you can do now to ensure that you continue to run and also kind of build authority while this thing uh, really take the U.S. by storm, not, well, the whole world by storm? Yeah, so it's, you know, definitely a difficult time for businesses in general, but when it comes to the boating industry and the marine industry, I think um, businesses are kind of in a unique position because um, specifically for boat dealers, I mean, um, going out on your boat is one of the activities that you kind of can do safely, you know, as long as you're following, um, you know, all the social distancing guidelines. So, um, you know, when it comes to sales and when it comes to service, you know, there is a need for that. And a lot of rentals and boat clubs are still operating. So um, I think, you know, this industry is still in a good position to kind of get through this, but there are some specific things that you can do um, just in terms of your marketing strategy and how you communicate to kind of adjust to this time. So that is why probably my first recommendation is if you are open and, you know, operating as normal or operating, you know, close to normal with a few changes to just make sure you use, you know, your online presence to communicate that. So, um, if you're doing maybe something like mobile service or no contact service, um, if you're doing things like private sea trials or um, private consultations or maybe even virtual con- consultations, kind of, you know, things you can do to make adjustments to be more um, just cautious during this time and then to communicate that to your customers. If you are doing like extra sanitation or things like that, just kind of consider doing things like that and make sure that you are communicating that as well as right now, if people want to browse, you know, your inventory of what you have using the website is a great way to do that during this time. They don't, you know, have to come into your dealership until, you know, they're ready to take that next step or something like that. They can look online. So it's a great way to, um, you know, promote that, promote people going to the website. Cool. Awesome. So I guess kind of, um, what are the things that like, if you are to be able to break this down in terms of from a digital marketing perspective and a kind of some of the key things that a business owner, the current marketing person or a general manager, what are the things that they can do to ensure not just obviously with, with the things that you just mentioned, communicating and ensure that customers know that you open, whether you open or not, and all the good stuff, but what are the other stuff that they need to be aware of and, and, and make sure those are well communicated, but also ensure that the business continuity is in place. Yeah. So as far as that, I kind of broke it down into a few different, I guess, areas to focus on. So one of the first ones we can talk about is your pay-per-click or whatever, you know, digital advertising you're doing. Knee-jerk reaction that we are seeing a lot over the last couple of weeks, now that this has started, is a lot of people will say, you know, I want to scale back my budget. I want to pause all my ads, you know, things like that, just because, you know, they're afraid they're not going to get as much business and they're not going to be able to afford that advertising. However, we recommend um, to maintain your marketing budget and your ad strategy that you're doing because, you know, cutting costs might 
give you a little bit of a temporary profit, you know, gain in the sense that you're not spending as much. But with the pay-per-click ads, particularly in Google or in Bing, you only are paying when someone clicks on your ad, you know, hence the name pay-per-click. So you're only paying for those clicks that are getting in front of those searches of keywords that you're bidding on, you know, people searching for boat dealer near me, people searching for boats for sale, people searching for, you know, the specific brand of boats you have. So it really is cost effective in that way that you're not spending the money unless you're getting in front of the right person. And it will keep your brand, you know, visible during that time and maintain your presence in the industry. So, you know, we recommend to really, when it comes to your paid ads kind of keep things running as you normally would, um, you know, assuming your business is still, you know, operating and whatever adjustments you have to make, whether that is instead of, you know, offering a in-person sales consultation, like you would, you offer a virtual consultation instead or something like that. You can kind of make those adjustments as you need. And you can even make adjustments to your ad copy to call out that you are offering special things like that or call out that you are open during that time. But in terms of, you know, the keywords that you're bidding on and the budget that you're putting out there, I would say keep things running the same if you kind of want to keep, you know, your business running at the same level. Okay, that's great. Now, what can what can one do in, in, in a situation where, well, let me, let me step back on that question. Because I guess, because the way the country is set right now, again, we're recording this in early April 2020, and not the whole country shut down, each state and each county and sometimes the municipalities slash city decide how certain things will operate. So it's not, so, so there are parts in the country right now where a dealer or boat rental doesn't operate at all, whereas there are parts in the countries that people just started to get oper- operating mm-hmm. because it just, uh, nothing is closed yet. So that's very, that's very, uh, put most boat dealers in a very strange spot, but if from a marketing perspective, and, and, and I agree, Sydney, and it's one of those things that we have seen where it's easy to say, well, this thing is going down, um, customer not going to come and buy. And that could be true, but as I'm, I'm not an economist, um, but if we could compare this to what we saw in 2008, these are two different timeline, two different um, um, occasion because of in 2008, the financial system collapsed. This current situation is not really, it's becoming an economic issue, but it wasn't that way when it first started. It was just a medical issue that just ravaged the world. And it is continue to be a medical issue, not an economic issue, which I, that's why I think, I, I believe that this is going to bounce back. And when it does, um, and it's going to bounce back faster, I think, than 2008, 2009 situation. But also what's, what's more important for me, from a business perspective, is that consumer are going to just hit, hit the ground and run and come out, out of the woodwork if they, if they are not looking right now. And at this time, this is why I also believe your marketing budget should stay intact or if anything, work with your agency or if you do this in in-house, it's shift a little bit. Um, and I know Sydney going to talk about some of the other pieces in, in, the, in your marketing um, uh, piece that you can, on your marketing plan that you can shift, but don't cut your budget overnight just because, well, people won't come. Now, there are places, there are time you might have to do that, but I don't think, it, I think it's a bit too early now, especially if your states or where you are, people still able to go out and, and boat. Um, we know as we speak right now, there are dealers that that killing it, that's making deals and people buying boats. And some of those deals, obviously, they, some of them may have been on the queue, but we know there are dealers that are still getting solid leads coming in. Uh, from everywhere and those leads did not just plop from nowhere is because those websites are running ads they're running um, lead generation system so at the end of the day if you must uh break down uh cut down on marketing we i think sydney would agree with this i i would highly suggest that don't cut it all away it's more of shifting resources to certain places that I know Sydney want to go over in a second there in terms of where can I spend this money to ensure that after this thing is solo, I am in a better spot um, than where I was before. 
And keep in mind, your competitors right now is probably cutting. And because of the nature of this, someone that may be one CD or two CD away from you, they might have to shut down their doors and close everything down because of the municipality law for them. Whereas where you are, you might be open. And uh, so that could be a good advantage for you to be in front of this customer. Um, so I know, I know said you may, may, may talk about maintaining the marketing budget. So what is the next thing that can be done when it comes to continuing running the business? Yeah. So like you said, obviously, you know, ideally you can maintain your budget and keep it the same, but things are changing every day right now. Currently some places have stay at home orders. Some places are just practicing social distancing and, you know, so there's a lot that can change, but you know, we, we recommend doing everything you can to keep things running as close to normal as possible to just maintain that presence, but, you know, make the adjustments when you can, where it makes sense. So it really, it, it could change, you know, tomorrow for, for all we know, but it's important, you know, as a business owner to keep things running as usual. And, you know, some may say what is and what isn't an essential business, but at this time, you know, going out on the boat is a great way for people to, you know, get away from the crowds and be with their own household and be with their own family, but still get outside and do something that they enjoy. So it is a really great industry to provide support for people during this time, even if it is, you know, in a recreational um, way. So, so as far as the next thing, we talked about ads and, you know, pay-per-click. So the next thing I want to talk about is really just communication, which we did talk about a little bit in the beginning when I said, you know, the things that you can do to let your audience know what you're doing, but there's just a couple of things to make sure of because really at this time, you know, most people are at home, you know, they have their computer, they have their cell phone and search engines and social media really is the place where a lot of people are going for information. So just to kind of make sure that you are covering all those channels, um, if you're changing any business hours or operating, put together some kind of message for your customers to let them know what's going on with your business. I'm sure a lot of you have gotten those letter from the CEO emails in your inbox, which some of them can be kind of annoying sometimes, but if it is a business, you know, that you interact with and you care about, you kind of want to know what's going on with them. So you can kind of put something together, throw it up on your blog, push it out through social media, make sure you're using Google My Business um, to post anything on there. So just kind of making sure that you are covering all channels that you can to communicate with your customers and push out any important information. And then like we talked about with the search engines, now is a good time to focus on your SEO for your website. So that is another, another um, big thing that you could put time into now. That's fantastic. And one of the things I know earlier when we talked, Sydney, you want to, we want to create um, one podcast dedicated just for SEO for the COVID-19, correct? Yeah. So we'll kind of touch on it a little bit now. Um, but basically when we talk about SEO, it's a very um, like big and it's a very almost hard to understand at times just because it's not the same as pay-per-click where, okay, you know, I set up my campaigns, I let them run and they're there and that's what it is. SEO is really more of an all-encompassing thing that has a bunch of different, it's like a big umbrella that has a bunch of different things under it that kind of all help to boost your organic ranking. So it's more of a process. And in terms of seeing good results for SEO, it usually does take a while. We usually say around six months as like a baseline, but can even go up from there. So um, if you are, you know, someone who maybe has a little bit of extra time because the foot traffic into your store is slowing down, or you kind of just want to take this time to invest on your future gains that you might have, um, this would be a good time to really start focusing on that SEO, doing things like blogging, updating your content, doing technical audits of the site, so that when things start to change in our world and, you know, normalcy starts to return and people are going out um, more, you will kind of see that, that lift in rankings start to gain momentum at that time. So, we are going to do another episode where we kind of go more in depth in the things that you can do, but that is something to kind of just keep in mind. That's fantastic. And one of the things that if I can echo Sydney for, for a second, and I know we're going to cover this topic in detail in another episode of, of the podcast, but if I can echo this, what she just said is if you think of SEO 
it's almost like running a marathon. It's not a sprint because it doesn't come, you don't, you don't get rank overnight. It takes a bit. So therefore it is important that maybe if your SEO been lagging, um, for lack of a better word, or you haven't put much time into it, this could be a good opportunity for you, given that the way this thing has been going um, for the last few months, it's going to last for another two months or three months. And by then, hopefully, you can you can make headways on SEO. So that is why it is important that's something you shouldn't ignore, whether you're doing this on in-house by yourself with your team or having an agency you work with that help making sure that you are really as you can be from an SEO perspective. Now, uh, transitioning from, from, from SEO, so we know, we make sure we, we maintain our, our marketing budgets and keep, keep things flowing, making sure we communicate through both social media and, and the website. We ensure that we, we have our SEO game plan ready. What is the next thing that a dealer should do to ensure that they continue uh, operation for for both consumer, but also get the get get a better footing on on the digital world. Yeah. So the last thing that I really want to touch on, which you kind of talked about a little bit earlier, and it kind of weaves into all the different things that we talked about, but it's really just to kind of stay on top of your local community's regulations and guidelines, and then kind of incorporate that into everything you're doing on the digital front. So like we said, you know, things are changing every day. Some places have shelter in place, some places don't. So you really, as a business owner and just a, you know, member of whatever community you are in to really stay on top of that is important because like we said, boating is you know, a great way to practice social distancing. And as a part of the boating and marine industry, as business owners, you kind of have to promote and push for your customers to do that safely, to allow them to still be able to do that. So um, just, you know, stay on top of whatever your local government is saying and make sure whatever messaging that you're pushing out, whether that's through social media, through blogs, I mean, you know, through your advertising is in line with what the government officials are asking the community to do. I know personally, you know, where we are in Florida, our local um, sheriff's office in one of the counties, nearby counties, they released like a statement of six guidelines for safe boating to give, you know, to the public just to say, you know, we're currently keeping waterways open, but please try to practice these things to maintain social distancing. So things like that, if you have something like that in your community, um, just make sure you're kind of on top of it. And then you can utilize that, you know, whether it's in your social media or your blog to also push that messaging out to your customers and kind of like we say, you know, it's good to always be a resource to your customers. So by utilizing whatever's going on in the community, you can kind of become a resource for your customers as well. That's fantastic. And really, um, if I can again echo what she uh, just said, as, as a business in the community that you serve, um, we know we, we get very extremely busy and, and, and occupied with on our daily day, day to day task. And we forget that sometimes, but at the end of the day, we are part of this community and we all end this together. And this thing is, I wouldn't say temporary, for, uh, but it, it's, it's not forever. So it's going to go away eventually. And when things come back to normalcy, you want to be, to be in front of, um, in those people's mind that when, when they start buying and thinking of buying, and one of the way you can do that is to ensure that give, uh, provide, become a resource for the community or for people that come to your site from, again, as Sydney said, just not, not just, uh, just posting a blog post, but give those guidelines that get pushed out by the government. You can use those to post on your website, say, here are the guidelines that's just pushed out this morning by the commissioners or by the county or by the city. And here are the things that are available right now. Or again, and if, if, if even possible, where you can, and, and um, you can even create a brief video, a 30 minutes, a 30, uh, a 30 seconds to two, three minutes video, tell them what's going on, uh, that date, when you are open, when you plan on closing, and what the current situation looks like, and making sure that you put a date on it. As you know, things are changing day by day in most part of the country. So make sure if you shoot something on Friday, you mention it's Friday, April, 
what date that is so that way people when they when they view that video they know what date you're talking about just in case things change from from when that video is published or when they're looking at it but again becoming a resource to the for, to the online community for the potential customer that's looking for more information again most people are on their computers right now they're on their phone even people that do not want to be, but you can only do so much by just sitting there without um, touching your computer and your phone to find more information. Eventually you will have to, and that's where you become that resource uh, for them. So with that, I, I guess Sydney, my, my last question for you, if there's anything else you would like to add to this or um, any, um, any additional notes you can. I think that covers everything that I wanted to talk about. Like I said, we are going to do another episode where we talk a little more in depth on the um, SEO strategy and kind of how you can implement that. Like we've said, you know, things are changing every day, but I think all, obviously we want to do everything we can to, you know, protect the community and make sure that those who are at risk and, you know, those around us are, you know, going to be healthy and we're going to, you know, help people. But I do think while we should, you know, stay inside and practice social distancing and things like that, it is important for us to do whatever we can to kind of maintain, you know, a sense of normalcy in the world. And if we are lucky enough to be part of a business that can still thrive and, you know, maintain everything in this state, it's important for us and for anyone in the boat industry to do what they can because we all, you know, are part of this economy and it is going to have an effect on everything. So, you know, I just think that's important. And that's why, you know, we want to help boat dealers and anyone in the marine industry do what they can to keep things running as usual. So I think that's important to remember. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Sydney. And I think we have a wrap. And again, guys, as you know, we conclude this show every time is we would love to hear from you. If you have any questions, comments, Feel free to drop us a note, visit our website for more information on our podcast or any resources that you would like to see by going to www.boatmarketingpost.com slash podcast. And if you have any tips, any other subject you would like us to cover on this show, any other questions, comment, anything, feel free to email us at podcast at boatmarketingpost.com. We would love to hear from you. And until next time, thank you for